What's up everybody, it's CMP with Craftmaster Productions and Studio12Tutorials.com. Don't forget to stop by Studio12Tutorials and pick up your premium membership. It is 50 cents a day. And also don't forget to stop by CMPKits.com and get yourself a copy of Plug and Play 808s. We have the new 808 Plug and Play Take Keith edition out right now that you guys are going to want to check out. 25 MIDI files that you could sync with the chord track and get the perfect 808 complement with your loops. Now today we're going to be doing a tutorial that has been long requested. It's finally here and we're going to be peeling back the curtain on how I make my samples um, you know, start to finish, right? So th the first thing that, th that I do is it's a lot of preparation. And what I like to do is I like to work and be efficient. Uh, somebody posted a question on Reddit, like, how many, how many beats and samples do you make in a week? And it's just like, dude, I can do... Uh, you know, I could do anywhere from seven to 10 compositions in a day. And these are on days that I work, it, it, you know, and then, and probably the same amount of beats. Um, and, uh, you know, they were really surprised by that. And I think it's because just, uh, you know, people, people don't have the correct setup. So this is my, this is my template for when I'm working on the current pack of samples that I'm working on right now. So when I'm, so when I'm doing a pack, it's not really anything that's random. I kind of have a, I kind of have a flow. It's uh, it's, it's like an album to me, you know, everything, everything has a sound and a color um, and a sonic signature. So the first thing, is, if you notice, is I have a Ranger track engaged, and that might that might seem like a little goofy to you if you're thinking like, oh, do you need to arrange samples? Um, the the samples that I create, I want them to be like you know at least you know long like a minute and a half long, and I want there to be different parts because I don't uh, I don't I don't sell stem kits, I don't I don't do construction kits at the moment. I'm uh, I'm leveraging more into actual um, compositions. And the reason why is because a lot of these, um, a lot of the, the VSTs that I use, they have stipulations in their EULAs that prevent against like playing, selling a product where their sample is being played isolated as a stem. And I know a lot of sample creators really don't care about it. Like you can, you can find Kingsway packs that, you know, that violate Omnisphere's EULA and shit like that. Uh, but I'm, you know, I, for me, I don't, I don't want that hit. So I try to, I try to play within, you know, within the software company's frameworks. So, um, I don't, you know, I don't have any, I don't have any drum set up right here. This is, you know, this is, I have a, I have a group called band. Then I have a sampler group and the sampler group has a couple of Serato samples. The reason why I keep the samplers in my template is because I like to see if the samples are usable. So I'll drag them into Serato sample, chop them up and make sure that they're being used and then I, and then be usable. And then I have my cheat codes, right? So I have Scalar, Easy Keys and Cthulhu are my cheat codes. Those are my MIDI cheat codes. And I'm going to do a whole video about those. So don't worry about that right now. What I want to show you guys is the template. Every time, every time I, uh, I go into Studio One, if I go ahead and close this out, When the, you know when I navigate when I navigate to my start page, um, and I go to create a new song, I have you know I have all these templates that I use. So this is this is my schemas template. I go ahead and pop this up, and what's and what's going to happen is I'm going to get a new project with that same screen that we were just looking at right now. And this saves you a tremendous amount of time because what it allows you to do is it allows you to set the band up right so a lot of people when they go into when they go into making sounds and songs and melodies um there's like this prevailing uh myth and belief that every song needs you, you got to use all different instruments and all different presets on it and that's just not true when you think about uh samples to begin with like if you like if you think about like really cool samples they're typically like made with orchestras or they're made with bands with the same musicians bringing their you know their one or two the same one or two instruments to work every day so i kind of uh come up with that same workflow now for me the the instruments that i'm using is i'm using labs by spitfire audio this is a free 100 percent free vst and it sounds amazing i'm gonna do um i'm gonna do a feature on just this plugin in the future i also have um 
I also have this uh, contact library from Spitfire Audios. It it is called what is the name of this contact library? This 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 audio is uh, this is crazy. It's called Sound Dust. Uh, Spitfire Audio does a lot of high end, um, does a lot of high end type of um, or orchestral sounding stuff. This this library is just nuts for uh, for bells. Like 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 you get this, you're gonna set yourself apart from like from the Omnisphere cheese, right? Like this is something that a lot of people aren't really on. So and it has it has four different instruments in here. I mean, you see the names: plastic ghost piano. Uh, you know these these dulcitone instruments, which these these are like the dulcimers that are in Keyscape. But basically, what basically why I fuck with this so hard is because um, the the you know their their end you their end user uh, license agreement is very conducive to making compositions. They don't have anything goofy in there that that it has to be a music song with drums or anything like that. And these are these these sound better than the Keyscape Creative stuff, like straight up. So um, the stuff that the stuff that I was using Omnisphere for, I use the um, the Spitfire Audio um, Sound Dust. Uh, um, stuff for and then i've got you know my my arturia stuff you guys know i you guys know i like the profit i have the real profit set up next to me uh this has a couple patches that aren't in the real profit that i like that are kind of like go-to sounds for me um so i keep i keep that in the mix uh the mellotron the mellotron uh addition to arturia 7 has been huge uh one of the reasons why is because it lets you um bring your own samples into here so i'll use this as a as a sampler um because it has the flutter mod Mod. this is you know this is like the the wobble from rc20 it's already built into this um this instrument by itself and then also it has this tape saturation effect which which you can turn the tape saturation up and you can also turn the noise floor up and it'll add just a even if you're not using it uh it, you could keep this low in the background it'll provide a noise floor and it'll just give you like a nice uh you know, like a nice warm vintage vibe um, the next, the next one that I have in my, in my arsenal here is the stage 83. This is just an electric piano from, uh, from Arturia, the, uh, analog lab, which is pretty much all their sense put into, um, put in, put into one. It has a, it has the reason why I like this so much is because it has an excellent browser, um, to be able to just get to the sound that you want really really quickly um the an, a, another one a sleeper a sleeper an absolute sleeper is sample tank 4 um sam, uh, sample tank 4 is uh is great for um like like for ethnic plucked sounds um it's got it, it's got some really good guitar sounds in here i mean I mean, look at it. It's got <laughs> a lot of guitar sounds, you know, fucking, you know, wheezy type beats, anybody. Um, so it's got it's got that and it. Good, good piano sounds in it as well. Um, and then again, it has a great organizer for you to be able to find the exact type of sound that you want. I uh, you'll notice a theme with the stuff that I use. It is all based around organization and being able to find it i keep i keep one um you know like really digital vst in the tuck and the one that i use is uh tone 2 electra 2 just because the third party presets are so good and i'm not doing uh you know for a lot of the sample based projects that i do if you know if you go on cmp kits and you look at my free loops that we do with mg the future at spicy sunday you can get kind of a uh, an example of of my work and my tones um i don't do a lot of um, you know, overtly synth based stuff, but synths are good, especially ARPs, uh, to kind of layer sounds with and, and provide and provide texture with and tone to lecture two is, uh, is beautiful for that. Um, then I've got the, I've got the East way, uh, the East West play library on deck. Uh, this is, you know, the, this is my go-to for orchestral sounds. The, um, you know, the fab four and the Stratocaster that's in here is amazing. And then, and then their voices collection is awesome. Um, <clears throat> you know, the, the voices of soul, um, it's, it, it's really good for like recreating, those um 
you know, if you're doing if you're doing soul samples and you need like a ooh, 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 ooh you know, you can you can play that on here. So you can have so you can have your vocal samples, you know, in your actual beat, which is dope because people people are going to pitch your beats and and or your or your loops. And that's going to allow you to, you know, have uh, have, you know, have that texture and everything in there. And then I have the uh, the Terry library from 8DO, which does a similar thing. It's a phrase library. And the thing about phrase libraries is they're not in key, so I have to use that um, in correlation with Melodyne and use it with a uh, use it with a uh, auto tune as well um, to make sure that we're in the same key. And then I've got um, another contact library output um, exhale. You know, a lot of my a lot of the a lot of the texture inside a lot of my loops is vocal centric. So uh, just being able to have these cool sounds. Um, they have staccato sounds. They have lead sounds. They have uh, they have pad sounds. So this is th this has been one of my main 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 go to um, type of um, t t type of plugins to to be able to create uh, uh, you know nice nice textures with everything. Um, so the way that you know the way that this is created is is if we. Uh, is if we go say say we went and we deleted everything right and we start and we start with the blank canvas this is this is all we have the way the way the way that you go about creating stuff like this is you go into you go into your instruments right and you go and you select you know you you select your favorite instrument so just for just for the sake of speed i'm just going to i'm just going to select uh, a couple you know, a couple, um, a couple different instruments, right? So this is, this is all going to be based on, you know, based on what you like and based on the vibe that you're going after, right? So say I have, so say I have those three instruments, the easiest way to get this going is to, is to go ahead and press shift, highlight them all, right click, and then you want to select this right here, select bus for selected channels. And it's going to add you a bus and you just make this band bus, right? Because that's where your instruments are going. And then to make it even a little neater, you can right click on this and select pack folder, rename this band. And now when you click this button here, you can you can collapse those instruments and then it'll also collapse it inside of the mixer. So you can kind of clean up your workspace a little bit. Uh, the next thing, you know, that I'm going to put in is my MIDI hacks right now. You want to make sure that you don't. Uh, put your MIDI hacks into into this actual group because that'll put it in the band bus. And what you do is you just throw those up top. Uh, so we'll do, you know, we'll do that. We'll do a Cthulhu and we'll do the easy keys, right? And then once you have your MIDI hack set, you just go ahead and highlight these. And uh, you don't need to send these to a bus because you're not worried about the audio from these. And these are just going to provide uh, MIDI support. So I'm going to go ahead and pack folder and we'll call this cheat codes, right? So these are, those are my cheat codes. Put this down here, right? And then I'll make it, you know, I'll make it a different color. Okay. Now what you're going to have is you're going to have this bus and from here you can go the way that this works is is all three of these tracks audio is summing down into this bus and then from this bus it's being shot to your main and then that is what your um you know you're going to you're going to export um as as your final wave so i like to put all of my effects that i'm going to be using uh for you know for um you know for my sample vibe onto the band bus and my go-to effects for that is going to be uh the tg the tg mastering bridge um and then i always use the same preset i use this one because that just sounds awesome then from the console we go into a tape machine right so i'll have that on deck and then from the tape machine we go 
into uh, onto a vinyl record, right? Because because that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make you know a nice uh, a nice vintage sounding uh, effect. Now, if you if you aren't going for a vintage sound, whatever your flavor is, you know, what I mean, that's this is where you're gonna put those plugins. Um, I I add I add another bus, right? So if you right click over here and you add bus, what I do is I make this bus called filter, and I send the output a filter to the band bus and I'm gonna slide it over here. And what the filter bus does is if there is, you know, say I wanted to put a, say I wanted to affect two of these tracks, like say I wanted to put Looperator on them, right? I could go ahead, select Looperator, have Looperator going, and then so, and then say, I, I only want Looperator on these two tracks. I highlight it, right click on it, and then and then I go ahead and send that to the filter bus. Now these two tracks are going to the filter bus. They're being affected by this insert. They're going out to they're going out to the you know to the console here, and then dropping off to our main. And uh, that just that just gives me options because that's something that's actually a big part of my workflow is uh, filtering and um, you know stuttering and adding different glitch effects to specific parts of the track and you you use the filter bus when you want to affect more than one um of the of the actual tracks in a given session at a time but that's kind of the basics the abcs of how i make these uh these templates and the great thing about this method is it allows you to update your template you can add and remove stuff and the way that you do that is you just go to file save as template and you know change the name of it or if you want to replace an existing one you can just you can just go ahead and uh, select that and then hit open and that'll let you save uh, you overwrite the template um, and the other thing is that you want to remember guys is when you're is when you're actually looking for these um, when you create a new song you want to make sure that uh, studio one will default you as the styles you want to make sure that you're in user user will be all of your templates otherwise you will not see them so this is cmp with craft master production studio one tutorials.com cmp kits.com you guys keep it simple but do not be basic and we will see you on the next one